what's up guys back again with another video so today we about to figure out and get to the bottom of this now because i could be wrong um the reason why we're going to talk about do you need a cdl to drive a truck with air brakes and a couple people are telling me you know that's wrong information and the reason why i even say you do is because i've been told that okay i've been told that by a company that i used to work for years ago bucket truck operator for traffic control like doing hanging traffic signals and stuff like that and one of our bucket truck had air brakes on it and you know the foreman was like you know you can't operate or drive that truck you know drive the one that don't have air brakes on it right we had two of them so I kept that in mind long time ago long time ago now also keep in mind I'm a class ACL driver so I can drive whatever and if you don't want this to be an issue you know at least get a class B and you have to pass the air brake part of the test and this wouldn't even be an issue but for those who want a CDL or who wants to purchase a buck a, a box truck and you know you're concerned about whether you need a cdl or not to operate that truck if you have air brakes or not you know just get a class b and this wouldn't even be an issue but if you want to drive anything that's out there make sure you get your 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 doubles and triples get your hazmat right get your passenger and then you can drive any commercial vehicle out there it won't even matter all right so this won't even be an issue but you know, I've been told that I'm wrong and I'm and um I could be. So we're gonna get to the bottom of that right now. Also, another way that I felt like you know that was information because I got information from right here. The uh Georgia commercial driver's license, right here. It says it, right? It says it right here. It says the part that I read to you guys in the video, and I still was told that I'm wrong, and I still could be, but we're gonna get to the bottom of that. Vehicles without air brakes do not require the driver to take the air brake part of the test. However, right the driver cannot drive a commercial vehicle with air brakes so that means that you know if you're willing or if you're wanting to operate a commercial vehicle without air brakes or with their brakes it's best not to take the cdl test because if it don't apply to drivers that don't have a cdl to require them to operate a truck with air brakes you might as well not take the CDL part. If you can operate a truck that's less than 26,000 pounds, if you can op that operate that truck and it has air brakes on it and you don't have a CDL, then I would say your solution would be don't get a CDL. Just operate that truck that have air brakes that don't require you to have a CDL because you didn't have to take the test. Because obviously, if this only just pertains to CDL drivers, you took the CDL test, you didn't pass the air brakes part, or you took the test in a truck that didn't have air brakes on it now you're not able to operate a truck that have air brakes because you took the cdl test you didn't pass the air brake part or you took this driving part in a truck that did not have air brakes on it which restricted you to drive a truck with air brakes but a person a person that doesn't have a cdl that never took the test they are allowed to operate a truck with air brakes on it because they didn't take the cdl test and the, tr and the truck is less than 26,000 pounds. So that's where all this confusion come into place. I hope I wasn't very confusing with that. But what we about to do is we about to call. We about to call the Georgia Department of Public Safety, right? We about to call them right now. And we're going to see what they have to say about this. All right. So. All right. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Corey. I have a question. Um, so when it pertains to operating a commercial vehicle with air brakes, do you have to have a CDL or or is it just a weight requirement? A CDL is 26,001 pounds. So if you got a vehicle that is combined weight or even single weight that weighs 26,001, you need a CDL. So if it's less than 26... And this is where I know. It's gross vehicle weight rate. Okay. All right. Now, um, because the reason why I'm even asking, because on the um, on the website, on your website, it says that pertaining to restrictions, if a driver... Did you go on? Um, I'm on the um, dpsgeorgia.gov, and it says special restrictions. It's... Hey, darling. Ma'am? Hey, we're not DOT. We're Department of Public Safety. <laughs> the power of public safety okay so should i should i should i contact um dlt i'm gonna give you a website to the fmcsa that's what that's what they go off of that's what these officers go off of going off of vehicle weight rate that's what they go off of and they have to take the test and they have to go off of that and they have to take the test and they have to go off of that 
guidelines to rules and regulations. You want that website? Yeah, I know, I know that website. I can I can pull that one up. All right, then. All right, thank you. All right, so she said it goes by gross vehicle weight. So you guys might be right. All right, so let's um. And she's correct. The FMCSA DLT. This is Georgia. This is the website that I was on. So this is misinformation um, on this website because. It's really just pertaining to if you are getting a CDL or not, whether you can operate a vehicle with air brakes or not. So let's call the FMCSA. All right. So we're going to call. I know it was kind of blurry. Please listen closely as our menu options have changed. If you are calling about operating authority, including questions regarding motor carrier insurance or reinstatements, press 1. Questions about state laws and regulations, including driver and vehicle licensing, press 3. I to think order that's a company, please contact your state DOT or Department of Motor Vehicles directly. You can find their contact information listed in the government pages of your phone Maybe book not. and on the web. Goodbye. <laughs> they don't want me to talk to nobody. Um... <laughs> Let's see if we can find, let's see if we can find something else. Um, Georgia State DOT. Because, you know, right now I'm in Georgia, so we're going to talk about Georgia. And this also will require to you if you're passing through Georgia, if these laws apply. So, uh, Georgia DOT. Motor carrier insurance or reinstatements, press 1. For assistance with portal accounts or PINs, press 2. To ensure that you receive your operating authority in the timeliest manner possible, Please make sure that your BOC3 and insurance have been filed and that your application is as complete as possible. Please enter your DOT number. This is correct. Press 1 to re-enter your number. Your call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance purposes. Thank you for calling FMCSA. My name is Beth. Can I get the US DOT number you're calling for, please? Thank you so much. And how can I assist you today, sir? Okay, I just have a, a general question that I'm getting confused about. When it um Okay. And it's more so about um the commercial operating operating a commercial vehicle. Is it required to have a CDL if the truck have air brakes on it? You know, I if you wouldn't mind just one moment, I actually had that question the other day and I referred the man that I was speaking with, but I am not certain about that. Would you mind if I just place you on a brief hold, let me get some information for you, and I will be back with you in just one moment. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Just a moment, please. All right. See, this is definitely a confusing thing, guys, but we're going to get to the bottom of this um, because I could be wrong, like I said. And also, too, like I mentioned in another video, you heard the automated system tell you to operate to activate your authority all you need is to of course apply for your us dot number right so apply for your authority and you have to have a bot 3 a boc3 and you have to have insurance that's all you need to activate authority now when it comes to drug and alcohol consortium and all this other type of stuff yeah you need that but it's not required to activate the authority those are the only things that you need to activate your authority so um if I'm wrong about that, you heard the automated system say that. But, you know, we can avoid all of this. Just get a Class B um, air brakes. That way, you don't have to limit yourself to whatever type of box truck you get, too. Um, but if you don't require or and also, too, you'll be able to drive a box truck that's gross weight and over 26,000 pounds. So just get a Class B. You can get a box truck that you can operate over 26,000 pounds. So you don't have to limit yourself to just 26,000 pounds. Um, and you don't have to worry about this air brake situation at all. So, Sir, thank you very much for holding. And I do apologize for the delay. If you wouldn't mind continuing to hold for me just a moment while I research that information. All right. Thank you. And as you can see, we're on line with FMCSA. And they don't know. So she has to find out. So it's definitely a confusing thing. Um, but, too, like I said, I witnessed this because I was coming through Florida, right? come across the border and a guy was stopped they shut him down he was operating a box truck that had air brakes on it and he did not have a cdl and that's why they shut him down so hopefully we can get 
the correct answer to this um, because it's confusing and I could be wrong. So, hey, sir, thank you very much for holding. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer, but I do have a referral for you to okay. contact the federal field office for your area. Okay. And you can pose that question to them. And if you wouldn't mind, just one moment and I will get the number for you to call. Just one moment. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Some more information. You're very welcome. Now, this is going to be for the Southern Service Center, and they're actually located in Atlanta, Georgia. And I will send you also an, an email with this information in it as well. But the contact phone number okay. for that Southern Service Center is just one moment 404 okay. 327. Okay. Seven four hundred. Seven four hundred. I got it. All right, I got it. Thank you. What was your name? Beth. Miss Beth. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, you are very welcome. And of course, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call back. And if we cannot answer the question for you, we can certainly refer you to someone that will be able to. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for calling FMCSA, sir. You have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you. You've reached the United States Department of Transportation, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration's Southern Service Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Para Español o Prima Cero. For a dial by name directory, press 3. The operator is not available. Record your message at the tone. All right, guys, honestly, as you can see, kept getting phone number after phone number and no one can give me a straight answer about this. So I would say um, I could be wrong. In my last video, I talked about, you know, you need or CDL or you, if you are operating with air brakes, um, I could be wrong. Um, I couldn't get a straight def definitive answer. So what I would recommend or suggest is that, you know, don't limit yourself to just a 26,000 pound box truck. You know, just get your class B. And that way you can operate a box truck that's 26,000 pounds or less or more either way and air brakes and all of that. It really wouldn't matter. So just at least get your class B. Um, if you are wanting to get a box truck without a CDL, I do know for a fact that you can operate a 26,000 pound box truck that doesn't have an air brake for sure. But you know, if, if it's not required then you know that would be totally up to you but what i do know is i got mixed information about this um i've seen firsthand about this but people are telling me that i'm wrong so i would say use your judgment you know you make the call on this one on your own and then just go from there but if you do want to avoid it just get a class b and um you don't have to worry about any of this stuff so if i'm wrong i apologize you know because the last thing that i want to do is give misinformation um and you know some guys been nice about it they've been like hey man you're giving misinformation you know do your research i did my research right but you know uh, apparently i can't get the uh, definitive answer about it and uh, the last thing that i want to do is if give misinformation also too you know how you guys are paying other people for information if i'm giving information to you guys that i know just because if i know it i'm giving it to you then you don't have to be telling me that i'm misleading people and all of that that's the last thing that i want to do because it's not like i'm charging you guys for any of this information you know i'm not asking for cash apps or patreon or any of that stuff i'm just simply trying to you know help my people out you know if you guys need information and if i got the information i try to give it as best that i can so if i am wrong about it i apologize i tried to get the anthem i tried to get the information for us um i even called the fmcsa and they didn't know they gave me a number i the automated system cut me off because it said that i need to call this number call the number and they referred me right back to the fmcsa so you know that's all i gotta say about it guys i'm i'm done with the conversation you can take whatever information that you have from it and move on and use your judgment whether you want to operate a box truck with air brakes or not with a cdl or not that's going to be totally up to you um so guys if you got any other questions besides that <laughs> let me know hit me up and until next time see you in the next video